Hello everybody, you're Synthodea, you're back in my program, and today I'm going to be doing the start of the Blood Mage abilities, and I know it has been a couple days since I've done a another <laughs> spell video. I recently just got my GitHub interacting with my Dropbox, and so that is working properly. It took me a little bit to get done, and that's part of the reason why videos have been coming out a little less frequently, but I'm getting back into it, hopefully, and uh, as you can see, my internet is down for some reason uh, but that's not going to deter me from recording and uploading later so I'm actually not going to be able to upload on the 29th so you guys are probably going to see this maybe on the 30th but yeah again I'm sorry <laughs> nothing I can do about this I've tried to check the settings and reset my ethernet and stuff but nothing seems to be working so I guess I just gotta wait for this problem to sort itself out so anyways first on the list is blood boil which is a spell that the Blood Mage takes spell damage equal to 35% of his maximum mana over 5 turns, but all enemies take divine damage equal to 50% of their maximum health over 5 turns. So that's a pretty lengthy description to be like, the Blood Mage loses health, but enemies, all enemies also lose a bunch of health. Upgrades make you lose less health and make the enemies take more health. Or lose, you lose less health and enemies lose more health. There we go, that makes a lot more sense. Anyways, next ability is Hemorrhage, which deals 150% spell damage plus bonus damage equal to 15% of the Blood Mage's maximum mana. Not bad. Then, yes, yes, okay, so that's fine. Upgrades make you do more damage, and that's it. So this shouldn't be too, too bad. And as you can see, there's little dots next to all my folders now because, uh, Git is now working properly, so that's that's pretty good. Let's go into the Blood Mage. On the actives, we're doing Blood Boil and Hemorrhage. And I do need to change this, because I did change the description of the spell to make it a little more clear. So now, what's going to happen is we need two variables. We're going to have two up here. This is going to be... Um, uh, self, I was gonna call like self health uh, loss. It's gonna be a number equal to 0 0.35, and then uh, enemy health loss, another number equals 0 0.5. So these are just the multipliers of how much total health you lose. And then one is for the health, or like the self cast, the one's for all the enemies. Then we're gonna need uh, to override update description. Then this dot description equals oh no nope, you gotta capitalize that the blood mage takes spell damage equal to plus math dot round this dot self health loss times one hundred percent of his maximum health over five turns but all enemies take divine damage equal to again it's a very lengthy spell spell description for doing not too much actually it just damages the end the uh, blood mage and all the enemies <laughs> this dot enemy health loss times 100 percent of their maximum health over five turns yeah Simple. <laughs> Simple, right? So I'm going to actually check something real quick just to make sure that um, Blood Boil doesn't go beyond the... <laughs> yeah, okay, I have a lot more room to work with. Okay, that's fine. Um, I will need... Oh, jeez, I'm going to need a lot of stuff. Okay, we're going to need four status, effect, status effects. Um, it's going to be the self uh, health effect, parent status effect listener, and I need four... No, I'm sorry... Yeah, no, no, I need, I need five variables total, actually. One for the self-health loss, and four for all the potential enemies. And then, uh, no, enemy, health, effect one, parent status effect listener, then I need three more of those. Two, three, four. Two, three, and four. And then I do need one more thing. I do need a an array, because of the way that I'm going to have to implement this. Enemy effect array, it's an array, equals new array. All right, and then in the initialization, enemy effect array dot push, 
this dot enemy effect or enemy health effect one, enemy health effect two, enemy health effect three, and enemy health effect four. So that's gonna be easy. Override, we're gonna upgrade to spell one, which is going to decrease the self health loss by 10%. So this dot self health loss or health loss minus equals 0 0.1 I'm going to override upgrade spell 2 which is going to increase enemy health loss enemy health loss by 0 0.15 and yeah so now we're going to override cast spell which is going to not do anything because it's not going to deal any damage it's just going to um, say or it's just gonna put the spell on cooldown because it also doesn't have a cost so what we're going to do is oh geez okay here's what is going to happen I need to apply the self health effect remove listener this dot self health effect this dot self health effect equals new parent status effect listener and so we're going to have to import status effect to call all the status effects it's going to be max uh no what is it what is um health 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 it's not a bleed it's not a poison huh hold on let me see what's the uh what's the uh because health poison deals current health by a factor of your current health what is the one that does current health based on max health oh it's a hemorrhage okay so that's what it's called so I'm going to hemorrhage the 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 mage the blood mage so we're gonna hemorrhage target is going to be the owner so it's gonna be the owner applied target is going to be the target doesn't really matter actually base target again just the target I guess the multiplier the negation of this dot self health loss divided by five duration is five on source doesn't matter gonna make it false rounds is true change doesn't matter this dot owner dot stats listeners push this dot self health effect okay so now here's what we're gonna have to do I have to go through the entity array list which is going to be in up, 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 uh, general where's my general class there we go entity my entity class and I'm going to have to basically iterate through and then check to see if their value or type is above one meaning if they're an enemy and from there I'll have to um, apply these effects so what's going to happen is I'm going to make a for loop of r i u int equals zero i is less than entity dot entities dot length i plus plus and then what's going to happen is uh, I have to get, iterate through if or rather I'm going to var current entity entity oh my god <laughs> I can't spell entity there we go. So get rid of bounty. For var uh, var and en current entity entity equals entity entities at index i. If current entity uh, type is it just type? I'm pretty sure it's just type. Yeah, it's just type. Okay. So if their type is greater than one, then what's going to happen is we're going to have to remove remove listener and I'm gonna need to go into the enemy effect array one second okay I've returned there's been I did settle an issue for you guys you probably didn't notice anything probably because it was a seamless transition because I'm so good at video editing but yeah anyways let's get back into this I need to iterate through your current entities type is greater than one meaning if they're an enemy then we're going to remove the enemy effect array at index i. Yes, and then this dot enemy effect array at index i equals new parent status effect listener. 
go into status effect and wait a minute. Let me see this real quick. Let's check hemorrhage. Yeah, they take spell damage instead of divine damage. So the thing is, um, I need to make a new status effect for that. Dang it. Okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I'll just do it in here. Whatever status. Oh, I can't do it in here. This is just not enough room. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to do private var. I'll put it down here actually. Private var divine health um, hemorrhage. Oh, I forgot how to spell hemorrhage. Is that how you spell hemorrhage? Is that correct? I think so. Oh, I didn't even look at this. Just do that, see if it's any different. Nope, I was right, sweet. Equals new, oh, rather, it is a status effect. Equals new, status effect. It's going to be, uh, uh what's its display name? I don't think it mean matters. Display description, uh, what's my health hemorrhage description? Uh, health for max health per turn. All right, good enough for me. Use that one. Change type is going to be divine. Stat to change, current health. Base stat, max health is positive, is going to be false. A singular, false. Reverts is going to be false. Reverse on override is false. Applied target, I don't think matters. Yes, oh wait. Add to array. I don't think I want to do that. So this one's going to be uh, I have to go down here. On source, true doesn't matter. Add to array. What does uh, this stat mean? Reverts. Oh, I didn't even do that. Okay, let's just do false. Because <laughs> I think if it's true, then it adds itself. Yeah, to the effects array, which I don't want. Because I just want to use this status effect in this class instead of being able to use it in here so anyways we got divine health hemorrhage yep 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 okay so now we can do this dot divine health hemorrhage target entity is the target from the owner is the source apply target doesn't matter base target doesn't matter oh wait i think it does actually wait does it really i think it does i think yeah, I'm actually pretty sure that it does matter because, yeah, base target is the target entity, which I think means this is correct. We'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Multiplier is going to be the negation of this dot enemy health loss divided by five. Duration is five. On source doesn't matter. Rounds is true. And that's it. Then, uh, current entity, oh, actually, hold on. Did I, yeah, 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 yeah. The target's the current entity. Yes, okay, so current entity, stats, listeners, dot, uh, push, this dot enemy effect array at index i. And I do need one more little layer here. If, Parent status effect listener dot check resisted uh, current entity, but I need to check if they don't resist it. Then I need to put all that in there. So I only want it to happen if they don't resist. And then from there, we're going to do. I'm going to go into the stat change event. I need to import it. Stat change. Uh, text array dot push not pop but I want push and then this dot owner dot stats display name plus blood boiled <laughs> uh, I guess I'll just do like boiled his blood yeah nice I think that's it actually hold on is does that seem does that seem correct? And then this one, current entity. Let's run it, see if it uh it crashes. If not, then I will test it out.
and oh oh okay I, I guess allow access I don't mind started just fine so I think I'm good okay let's let's try the spell out go down here active blood not bleed out I want um, blood boil dot unlock entity player active yeah blood boil we're gonna upgrade it just because why not we oh my god my cat's making noise and then this one that we're going to cast spell onto the ally one it doesn't really matter who I cast it on because it's gonna affect every entity but whatever so let's see if this works Ooh, okay didn't crash which is good um, let's see what happened. So we cast the spell. Player took 50 divine, no, it was 50 spell damage, but the ally one took divine damage. Oh, baby. And yes. Um, so the spell itself, let's, um, go ahead and just trace its description. Blood boil dot description. Just so I can uh, see the math behind it. Boop, okay. Player keeps dying though, which is weird considering that blood boil is incredibly powerful. Equal to 25% of his maximum health, which is he takes 5% of his health per turn, which makes sense. So he's taking 50 damage per turn, but all, all enemies take divine damage equal to 65% of their magic damage over five turns which is 13% which makes sense so that's really good so how much different that is really weird 65% is like it's a ton of damage and look the player has like a 200 and no it's more than 200 it's, um, almost 300 health difference on the ally and he still manages to die somehow I don't I don't know what happened but the player missed the player missed the player didn't really do a lot of damage but yeah I guess the allies damage just caught up unfortunately but whatever I think uh, it's working just fine it's dealing the exact damage that it should so I am okay with that let's uh, go on to hemorrhage which shouldn't take very long Deals a flat percent of spell damage plus bonus damage equal to 15% of the t Blood Mage's maximum mana. And then you can upgrade it to do all that junk. So yes, this should be very, very easy. Override, update description. Gonna need a couple variables up here first. Or just one, yeah. Uh, max mana convert, it's gonna be a number equals 15%. There we go. This dot description equals deals plus math dot round this dot initial damage molt times 100 percent spell damage plus bonus oh my god <laughs> bonus damage equal to plus math dot round this dot max mana convert times 100 percent of the blood mages maximum mana very very easy we're going to override oops upgrade spell one and in here we're just going to increase the initial damage molt by I think uh, 0.5 yes but 0.5 no, no no go back there we go we're gonna override upgrade spell two. I can't, I messed it up somehow. Upgrade spell two, there we go. This one's going to increase max mana convert by 20%, so 0 0.2. There we go, okay, and then override cast spell. So this one's going to need a variable damage dealt. It's gonna be, a, it's gonna be an int equals super cast spell target, and then uh, rather damage dealt equals yeah new stat change event we're changing oh my goodness 
We're changing current health. Uh, it's going to do more spell damage. Target entity is the target. The source is the owner. By a factor of this dot owners max mana times this dot max mana convert. And then the change of it is what we want to increase the damage dealt by. Return damage dealt. Is that it? I think that's it actually. Current health spell target this owner. I'm pretty sure that's it. So let's go ahead and, and test it out. Hemorrhage dot unlock entity player. Active hemorrhage dot upgrade spell one. Again, do the same thing I did last time, and I will do one more. Cast spell on the ally one. I'm going to upgrade spell two. So if this works, then that's it. This video is really short. I'm surprised. There we go. Okay, didn't crash, so that's good. Let's go up here. Let's see what happened. So we cast the spell. So we got a current health cast. It dealt 20 damage to me. And then we dealt current health spell by 50, which was the initial damage. And then current by... Oh, actually... Oop, I think I messed up. Yep, I did. I have to do the negation. Because it's dealing damage, not healing. Let's do it. Okay, so... Now that should have fixed it. Nope, job. Yep, okay. Working just fine. 74 damage, and then more damage equal to 350, which is... 35% of the Blood Mage's maximum mana, correct? Yes. And then the ally owned the end, the player because his weapon dealt so much more damage. But yeah, that's working just fine. Okay, I actually enjoyed that because it wasn't didn't really sh give many problems. And these two spells are now ready to go. And I need two more spells in the next video, which is Bleed Out and Infusion. So Bleed Out makes the blood mage spend 30% of his current health, 10 minimum, to deal spell damage equal to two times the health spent. Pretty cool. And then you can do an upgrade that gives you plus two da damage multiplier to get four times the health spent, and minus two turn, to turn cooldown to get a two turn cooldown, which is pretty good. And then the next one, infusion, deals spell damage to each enemy equal to 10% of their maximum health and heals the blood mage by the total damage dealt. That is crazy. That's crazy good. <laughs> Upgrade plus 10% maximum health damage, so 20% of their maximum health. And then this converts the spell damage to divine damage. So it'll, it'll instead deal divine damage to each enemy equal to 10% or 20% of their max health and heals the blood mage by the total damage dealt. Which is very good, to say the least. Has a high cooldown though, so you can only use it every now and then. And so yeah, those are the next two abilities. Can't wait to get to those because the Blood Mage is really cool in terms of his abilities. And yeah, that's the end of that video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please show your appreciation by commenting, subscribing, liking, all that wonderful garbage. And I'll see you guys next time.